Hello and welcome back to LearnAboutEyes.com. This week I'm going to show you how to insert a nylon suture into a pressure flow implant to prevent postoperative hypotony. So let's go. First, a quick backstory about pressure flow. Pressure flow is a fantastic implant used in glaucoma filtering surgeries. It has a length of 8.5 millimeters, an outer diameter of 350 microns and an inner diameter of 70 microns. It was initially developed by the company InFocus. That's why you can find the word InFocus Microshunt in the earlier publications. 2016, the company InFocus was bought by Santon and InFocus Microshunt was renamed to Preserflow Microshunt. In 2021, Santan has sold parts of their rights for Preserflow to the company Glaucos. Now Preserflow is distributed by Santan in Europe and Asia and by Glaucos in North and South America, as well as Australia. While Preserflow has become quite popular because it creates these beautiful, wide, diffuse posterior blebs, it also causes quite a high number of early postoperative hypotenies. There are basically two types of hypotony numeric hypotony and symptomatic or clinical hypotony. Numeric hypotony is just you measuring a low eye pressure. Depending on the source, this can be defined below an IOP of 6.5, 6 or 5 millimeters of mercury. But to define it as a numeric hypotony, there have to be no visual changes at the slit lamp. This is quite common with pressure flow patients and nothing we need to worry about. However, there's also the symptomatic or clinical hypotony. This is when we have a low eye pressure and also see some changes at the slit lamp. Most commonly, those changes are shallow anterior chamber, choroidal effusions, and sometimes choroidal folds. Depending on the severity, these changes are noticeable to the patient and need to be treated. This treatment can range from AC fill with air or viscoelastic, here an example of an AC fill with air, up to a surgical intervention with surgical drainage of choroidal effusions. This can be stressful for the patient as well as the surgeon, and we definitely have to have the goal to have as few of these interventions as possible. In the literature, the numbers for numeric and symptomatic hypotony fluctuate quite a bit. Numeric hypotony is usually around 15% and symptomatic hypotony seems to be between 5 and 10%. However, there are some studies that mention a lot higher hypotony numbers, as for example this one. As surgeons, we always have to aim for perfection. We always want the lowest possible complication rates. Therefore, it's our duty to find changes in our technique to bring those numbers down. Most studies show a post-op pressure development like this. You can see a clear dip in the first six weeks. I personally have been putting 10 nylon rib cords in all my pressure flow patients since December 2023. And this is what my post-operative pressures look like. You can see there's no more dip in the early post-operative phase. And on top of that, my symptomatic hypotony rates are now very close to 0%. And here's how I do it. I put a 10 nylon suture into the pressor flow at the time of surgery. I use a spatula needle to anchor the suture in the cornea. Note that I put the suture as far posterior as I can. I then cut the ends with a vanna scissor and put the suture into the implant with a forceps. This can be a bit tricky, especially when you need to use your left hand. Use a high magnification, this will help you succeed. I then thread the other suture end underneath to keep it posterior. Let me show you the flow difference before and after the suture is in place. This is before and this is after. That difference is just impressive, right? When closing, I always close the tenons first, about one millimeter back from the limbus. Then I close the conge and make sure it fully covers the ripcord at the limbus. This way I can avoid exposure 
and potential blebitis or even endophthalmitis later on. Once the pressure rises after surgery, you can remove the ripcord at the slit lamp. And here's a video of how I do it. I just push back the conch until I see the suture. Then I gently pull both ends out and then remove it from the cornea. I don't recommend pulling the suture through the cornea first because it might break at the kink and then you might have some trouble getting the rest out from under the conjunctiva and might even need to do a revision. Many other surgeons use a 90 nylon. I personally use a 10 nylon. The 90 nylon provides even less flow, of course. However, I've been very happy with my 10 nylon. And I even have some patients that remain on a fantastic pressure long time after surgery with the suture still in. This patient, for example, has a pressure of 10 without any meds at post-op month three. And as you can see, the ripcord is still in. This was my early technique, so the ripcord is exposed and I will need to remove it. But with my new technique, it won't be a problem anymore. And did you notice the beautiful bleb? Since I've been putting this suture in, I found that I do a lot less five of you and needling for my pressure flow patients and my blebs seem to be more calm. I'm not fully clear on why this could be, but I imagine it has something to do with the aqueous flow under the tenons. We know from tube shunts that restricting the aqueous flow in the early postoperative period can lead to significantly less hyperencapsulation or hypertensive phase. This could be exactly the same mechanism here, so less flow through the tube, less reaction, from the tenons and thus more permeable bleb walls. I'll definitely look into that topic more in the future, but for now, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel for more content like this and see you in the next one.